بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والارض وجعل الظلمات والنور all praise be to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just note after surah al fatiha we are again beginning a surah with alhamdulillah and this is the seventh part is it and you will find again in the 15th part سورت الكهف الحمد لله الذي انزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا then again in the 22nd سورت الفاتح سورت الصبا الحمد لله الحمد لله at regular intervals in the quran the surahs are starting with الحمد لله بالتحميد الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والارض all praise be to allah سبحانه وتعالى who created the heavens and the earth wa ja'ala az-zulumat wan nur not the change of the world and he made light and darkness because for darkness khalq is not an appropriate word darkness is no positive existence it's a negative concept there is no light it's darkness so khalq you know this cannot be applicable wa ja'ala az-zulumat wan nur and he made the darknesses again note darknesses in plural wan nur light as a singular summa alladhina kafaru bi rabbihim yadilun but those who disbelieve they are associating partners equals to allah adil here means to make equal because adil means equity to assigning someone to be equal to allah that word is used in this form also because actually now this is tauhid so the first aya is discussing tauhid in condemning shirk thumma alladhina kafaru bi rabbihim yadilun هو الذي خلقكم من طين ثم قضى اجلا it is he who created you from clay and then he decreed and fixed a term a time wa ajalun musamman indahu and there is another fixed term and time which is with him thumma antum tantarun but you are doubting about it what does it mean two ajals one ajal we know each individual has a fixed time of death and nobody denies it do you know any person who can deny death so sure of it although we just keep it out of our mind don't want to think about it but we know it it has to come sooner or later in the same way there is another time fixed for this whole world about that you are doubting you see this time these are two things each individual has an ajal and you all believe in it and this whole world has an ajal you don't want to believe it how come so this is the simple logic of quran هو الذي خلقكم من طين ثم قضى اجلا واجل المصبن عنده ثم انتم تنطرون and this is you know in the who is very important it is with him he only knows ان الله عنده علم الساعه nobody knows about this you know ajal of this world when it will come the doomsday when it will come nobody knows even the prophet in that hadith of jibril he said nobody knows it except allah now in the first aya there was tawhid in the second aya it is resurrection and doomsday wa huwa allah fi samawati wa fil ard and he is the god in the heavens as well as on earth you tend to believe the one who is in heaven you don't want to believe in the one who is in this world what did it mean 
If you believe that he is the Lord of the heavens as well as the Lord of this world, you must establish his kingdom here. Kingdom of heaven on earth. But we have separated the two. My Lord, your Lord. And that Lord has nothing to do with this world. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You are the same God. You are the same Allah. He is the same Allah. His command, you know, is being executed in the skies. Thy will be done as it is in earth, in the heavens. Ya Allah Musirrakum wa Jahrakum. He knows whatever you hide and whatever you pronounce openly. Vayala Mumatak He knows what you are earning. And I told you that this word cusp in Quran appears good deeds or bad deeds. And to him and to these people, whichever sign of Allah comes, there doesn't come to them any sign of Allah, but they are turning away. They turn their faces up, away. They are not going to accept. فَقَدْ كَزَّبُوا بِالْحَقِّ لَمَّا جَاهُمْ Now this قَدْ كَزَّبُوا Note it. In Arabic when with the past tense مَازِي فِعْلُ الْمَازِي If it is preceded by قَدْ It means pleasant perfect tense. It has happened. Something which has already happened. فَقَدْ كَزَّبُوا بِالْحَقِّ لَمَّا جَاهُمْ They have refuted, rejected the truth which has come to them. Why it is being said in the twelfth year after the beginning of Wahi. Twelve long years had passed. Muhammad sallallahu was conveying to them the message. Despite all the persecution, verbal or physical. He continued and continued and continued. A small city. Maybe less than Flushing. Flushing might be a very big town, I don't know. A few hundred families living in Makkah, that's all. And twelve long years, preaching day and night. Those who have not up till now accepted it, it means they have rejected. That is why in the very first section of Surah Al-Baqarah you find, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَبَاعُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ عَنْزَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنْذِرُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ خَتَبَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ أَفْسَارِهِمْ غِشَابًا Those who have rejected it. Now there's no use if you go on preaching and preaching to them. They are not going to believe. Allah has put on their, a seal on their hearts. You will find the same subject coming in this surah also. Because you know, these surahs, if it is correct that this was revealed in the last year before Hijrah, the first surah after Hijrah is Surah Al-Baqarah. So the two are joined together. Although in the Mus'af, you know, in this, we find them very much separate. فَقَدْ كَرْزَبُوا بِالْحَقِّ لَمَّا جَاءُوا فَصَوْ فَيَاتِيهِمْ أَمْبَاوْ مَا كَانُوا بِهِ يَسْتَعْتِعُونَ So very soon, the news of those things will come to them about whom they were mocking. They were mocking. What will happen? No. You are threatening us with some dark consequences that the punishment of Allah will come. No. No. So all these things will come to them. They will see it. Seventy of them will be lying dead in the battle of Badr. It's not very far off. They're just approaching. Abu Jal, lying dead. Umayyah ibn Khalf, lying dead. Seventy of them. Soon the news of those things will come to them as actual events about which they had been mocking. Alam yarao kama ahlakna min qablehi min qarnin makkal nahum fil ardi ma'alam no makkin lakum. Have they not considered it? How many generations we destroyed before them? You know the history of Ad and Samud. These nations were 
ایٹ سم ٹائم لیونگ ان دی عربین پینسولا دا نیشن آف آد دا نیشن آف ہود ان دا ساؤدرن پارٹ وچ از دی ورسٹ ٹائپ آف ڈیزرٹ ٹو ڈے اینڈ ویری ریسنٹلی یو نو دیئر سٹی شداز کیپیٹل ہیز بین ڈسکورڈ وچ از انڈر دی ڈیزرٹ اینڈ یو نو سبود ٹو ہوم سالے واس سینڈ ہی لیو یو نو in the northwestern region of the arabian peninsula so these people knew their their nations that there was such a nation it was destroyed awalam yaro alam yaro kam ahlakna min qablihi min qarnin how many generations how many nations we destroyed and eliminated makkanahu fil ard ma lam nukin lakum we established them in the land as much we have not established you The hold of Ad was very great, a very big culture, very big civilization. In the same way, in the days of Samud, they were very powerful. Oh, you Quraysh of Bakka, you are not so powerful. You are, you are only enjoying some privileges because you are the custodians of Kaaba. The ilaf of Quraysh, the ilaf of him, the ilaf of Shaitai was safe. But the ilaf of him, the ilaf of him, the ilaf of him, the ilaf of him, the ilaf of him. not due to your own strength you are not on your own feet but qaum aad and qaum sumud they were very great people wasalna sama alaihim midrara and we poured water from heaven on them like torrents rains coming abundantly wajalna alhara tadri mitate and we made rivers flowing underneath them fahlaknahum bidunubihim but then we destroyed them finished with them eliminated them due to their sins wansana min badihim qarnan akhareen and then we raised after them another generation walaw nazzalna alayka kitaban fi qirtasin falamasuhu bi aydihim and had we sent down on them a book in parchment and they would have touched it with their hands laqal alladheena kafaru in hadha illa sahru mubeen then these unbelievers would have said oh it is magic it is sorcery so the background of this ayah and you know the passage is passage which we shall read in the next hour it's very important you know so to say please don't take it literally at that time the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was as if he was being crushed between the two stones of a grinder i am using very strong words what's the meaning on the one hand the the chiefs of quraish they were demanding from him a visible miracle oh muhammad if you say you are a messenger of allah show us the miracles that were given to the former messengers and this sounded very logical is it so if you say you are a messenger of allah show us a miracle and the miracle which we can see of with our eyes if to samud that miracle was given that of their demand a pregnant she camel came out from the rock well they were demanding such a miracle from him all and what was the effect on the masses on the common people oh yes yes they are very correct they are making a just demand from him but he is claiming to be the messenger of allah so he must show the miracle this is on one side and on the other hand allah said no nothing doing i am not going to show them any such miracle we shall read it you can very well very well appreciate to what sort of a complicated position in which he was caught and what were the feelings of the prophet and what were the feelings of the companions of the prophet what were the feelings of the common people and what were the feelings of the chieftains that we shall inshallah read in the next passage بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات وذكر الحكيم